Here we go. Here we go. At our church, Jesus is Lord. That single belief calls us together as a community and sends us into our world with hope and purpose. At our church, your past will never define your future. There's always redemption, which means there's always a brighter day. At our church, we don't think we're better than any other church out there. We're just doing our best to become our best. At our church, we want you to believe in God, but we also want you to know that God believes in you. We are not against people who don't attend church anywhere. Instead, we pursue them with love, the very same love that's pursuing us. At our church, we're learning to serve God with all our hearts and we're learning to worship Him with all our lives. And if you're looking for the perfect church, we're not it. At our church, we will make mistakes, but we will choose to grow from them. At our church, we're part of a global community that's knit together by the resurrection of Jesus. And by the way, at our church, we believe that really happened too. At our church, we will engage with people who are in real need because we are the hands and the feet of Christ. And finally, we need you to hear this loud and clear. At our church, it's not really our church at all. It's His, and we live and move and breathe in His church for His glory and His fame, not ours. So here's the invitation. You're invited to jump in with your whole heart at your own pace and to experience the life that awaits you in Christ. Friends, this is going to be good. Welcome to our church. Oh, I just want to give God some honor and some praise this morning. I want to glorify his name because God has been so good to me in my life this week and all throughout my life. See, I can't do nothing but give God some praise Ooh, and give him some worship. Oh, and I hope you can do the same. I just want to take this opportunity right now and go into a word of prayer because God is getting ready to show up and show out here at the water and also where you are at right now. If you don't mind, I would like for you, for you to join me in this word of prayer. Father in heaven, Lord, I wanna thank you. Lord, I wanna thank you, Lord, for allowing me to stand before you in the midst of your beautiful creation as humble as I know how. Lord, I just wanna thank you, Lord, for how you allow us to wake up this morning, Lord, to be among the living. Lord, that is a blessing. Lord, that is a gift to live among the living. And Lord, I just want to thank you, Lord, for being a great and awesome God, Lord, that you are. Lord, I just want to thank you for the water, for the trees, for the birds. Lord, I just want to thank you for the small things. Lord, I want to thank you for what you're getting ready to do in our life, Lord. Lord, you just told us, Lord, to stand still, Lord, and the job, the fight will be done. That you will go before us and take our enemies out. Lord, I want to just thank you for being a, a warrior in the midst of the storm. And Lord, thank you, Lord, right now, Lord, for being our provider, Lord. How you providing for us, Lord, in the midst of this pandemic. Lord, man said no, but God, you turn around and said yes. Man tried to close the door. Lord, they thought they closed that door. But Lord, you stood there and you just blew the door open with one breath of air. But Lord, I just want to thank you. And Lord, I just want to thank you, Lord, for being our shield. Lord, how you protecting us, Lord, from, from the, the wiles of the devil. Lord, how you protecting us, Lord, from uh, how the devil want to take us out in the midst of this situation. But Lord, you said, no, that is my child. And Lord, I just want to thank you, Lord, for choosing us today, Lord, to do your will and follow your ways. Now, Lord, I want to thank you, Lord, for your manservant who is standing here before you. Lord, I just want to thank you, Lord, for allowing me to, to be chosen to speak the word to your people so I can magnify, so I can add something to their life. Lord, that I may be able to let them know that God is in the midst of your situation. Lord, thank you, Lord, for allowing me to open up my mouth. And once I open up my mouth, the words from you, Lord, will flow, Lord, 
with, with, with anointing to touch your people. Lord, I just want to thank you, Lord, for how you are blessing. How, Lord, how you are bringing things in our presence. Lord, how you are letting people know that you are God and God alone. And Lord, I just want to thank you, Lord, for, for those, Lord, right now, Lord, that don't see no way out of no way. Lord, that's saying it's impossible to go through this holiday season. But Lord, I just want to thank you, Lord, how you make a provision for things to happen right now at this time. Lord, you are mighty and you are awesome. Let the people of God say amen, amen, and amen. Oh, let the people of God say amen once again. Hey, I just want to take this opportunity to thank everyone for coming here on our afternoon worship experience. My name is Pastor David of Melody Family Worship Center of Atlanta slash Dallas, Georgia. On behalf of Prophetess Lady Washington, or we call her uh, Prophetess Nikki and myself, we just want to thank you guys so much for coming here this afternoon to receive a word from the Lord. Amen. And before I get started, and y'all know you guys know I do this every week, and I don't do it out of formality. I do it out of because when God has um placed somebody in your life to be a help to you, you give them the props. Amen. I just want to take take this opportunity and thank um Lady um Nicole for everything she's doing for the ministry. And I say every week that how God is using her to go out, to go out and talk to people about the goodness of Jesus. See, I, I, I know God is using her because the type of people she comes in contact with, you know what, some of us would give up and walk away, but I find out that she she meets a challenge, that she, she has God with her, so God is directing her path and protecting her from all situations. Amen, and, uh, and let me tell you something else about Lady Washington. Um, she can see a family walking down the street going to an appointment and she was telling me this, this week how a whole family was walking and they were going down a big hill and how God began to speak to her and tell her to go and pick that family up so she said immediately she heard the voice of the Lord she turned around went back picked that family up it was like five or six of them and took them to their destination amen ain't that something yes we know that there's there's a virus a COVID-19 going around and all that but Lady Washington believe me she is one of those people listen uh I believe she missed her calling as being a doctor. But let me tell you this. She take extra, extra precaution when it comes down to that virus. Amen. So once again, I want to give props out to her. And I also want to give some props out to those that comes with me every um, um, Sunday afternoon for our live um, broadcast on Facebook Live. I want to thank you so much for coming here and listening to your manservant. And I just hope you've been blessed or being blessed by what God is saying. Some of you may feel like, well, you know what, he's not talking to me, but for some reason, God have you had you to stop by on Facebook Live and listen to around five seconds, 10 seconds, 30 minutes of what I got to say because God has a word for you. Now we're going to get into this word and we're going to let God speak because God want to talk to somebody. God want to drop a blessing in your life. Amen. It's a beautiful afternoon out here. Now, you know what? This is letting me know that God is awesome. I'm looking over here uh, to my side and I see my little buddy coming, my little uh, goose coming. You know, he's at the water with me every, every afternoon on this Sunday. And he's getting to the point now, he ain't scared to come up to me. Amen. That's just letting me know that God creations, listen, they understand when the word of God is being spoken. If you don't believe me, you better get close to nature. Amen. But we just want to get started into our word because God is getting ready to speak. Well, we've been talking about uh, from a mess to a miracle, the messy family, a dude named David. Yes, we talk about that dude in the Bible. Y'all yeah, know, the one that killed Goliath, the one that was a shepherd boy, the one, listen, that God has chosen to do his will. Amen. See, when you are going to be chosen by God to do your will, listen, God is going to let you know that things are going to take place. Things are going 
to happen. Amen. So I, I'm just looking on the side because I'm looking at my little buddy trying to walk over here. But that's all right. Amen. But we want to get started with this thing because God is getting ready to show up. Let's get started. Now, last week, we was talking about how my man, Saul, King Saul, was trying to kill David. Now, I just want to give you a little recap. Now, he had three plans to get rid of David. Plan A, this is what he tried to do. Plan A, he tried to kill David by throwing a spear at him. Listen, plan B, listen, he, 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 he tried to get somebody else to kill David. Plan C, he said, if you can't beat him, trick him. Amen. And that's how the devil operates. The devil is always trying to find a way to take you out. But I'm here to tell you today, if you are lined up in the word of God, if, you, if you're living according to the word of God, listen, you don't have to worry about the devil trying to take you out because God is going to make sure that he's, he's your protector in the midst of the storm. Amen. See, that devil got a job too. Some of us don't realize that. Some of us don't realize that the devil have a 24-7 job that he have to do. And his job is, you know what, to go out there and take you out to kill you, to make you lose your thing, to, to make you not get close to God. That is his job. Amen. But we got to understand that the devil is real. There's no answer, but the devil got to do what he's supposed to do. But I'm here to tell you, you have that the, you have the, the strength, you have the understanding, you have the power to tell the devil to get from me, Satan, free. So I'm just here to tell you this, this afternoon that God is getting ready to let you know the devil is on his way, but the devil will not be able to touch you. And listen, we also talked about how to deal with a bad boss. Amen. Now we know that Saul was a very um, corrupt king. He was a very angry king because number one, he, he left God. So when he left God, God rejected him. And so when you have a boss who's just brutal, who's just nasty, who, who, who just want to take you out or he's jealous, we got to remember this. You got to know how to deal with a bad boss. This is how you deal with them. You have to respect authority. Yes, I know you said, well, he, he, he's doing me wrong. He don't like me. But you clearly got to understand you have to respect leadership. You have to respect authority. And also, you still got to do your job well. And even though the boss may set you up or it may, t may tell you, listen, you didn't do this job right, but you know you did it. But you still got to do it to the potential. Do it to your perfection. Amen. I, I'm just letting you know when you deal with bad bosses, listen, they have something going on in, on in their mind, in their life, that is making them do evil things. Amen. Or maybe they just left God that my boy Saul did. And you also got to remain humble. Remember I said that last week, you have to remain humble. Regardless of the situation of your boss, you still have to remain humble like my boy David did. Amen. And then we want to also um, go over how we heard last week how Saul heard that his daughter um, Micah was in love with David. So he presented her in a second offering. Remember the first offering when he tried to give his first daughter to him? Amen. But then he tricked David by getting, having his daughter marry somebody else. But here, um, um, God has showing us that there was another daughter that Saul had named Micah who was in love with David. So he presented her uh, as a second offering. Amen. But listen to this. Listen to this. But it, it, it was said that David uh, could not accept the gift or the young lady because his status, his social status wasn't up there. See, if you know anything about social status back then, see, if you didn't come from a, a royal family, listen, you was considered poor that you could not touch the things of royalty because your background, your ancestors did not have, listen, what you call royalty in their blood. But how many of you know that God can overrule all of that? So here my boy um, Saul was, was going to present his, his daughter Micah to David because she was in love with David. Amen. And then it, it, it said, ready when it answered, Saul gave David a, 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 a very 
gruesome alternator to, 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 to pay for the bride. See, he told David so many words. Now, I'm going to offer my daughter to you, but you got to give me something in return. Woo, that devil is something else. See, this is like this. The devil is telling you, listen, I'll give you that, that house on the hill. I'll give you that jet. I'll give you that job you've been wanting, but you got to give me something in return. You got to give me your soul, see? And you got to understand the devil is not going to um, give you something and, and, and you get just get it and move on. No, the devil wants something in return. So this takes us to today's lesson, amen? Now, if you go with me to 1 Samuel, the 19th chapter uh, through the 24th, I'm not going to be before you long. I tried to uh, condense everything down to at least um, 25 to 30 minutes, amen? If you go with me to 1 Samuel, the 19th um, chapter through the 24th, and we want to start in the 19th chapter. That's where I want to go. And we want to go to verse 24, I'm sorry. And it reads like this. After Saul ordered his son and his servant to kill David, Jonathan could not bring himself to believe his father really intended such an evil. Listen, in a string of defense of his friend, Jonathan convinced Saul to reconsider but the oath the king made to spare David's life was short-lived. Let me start right there. We want to understand this. Listen, it says that after Saul ordered his son, y'all know the son, his son's name was Jonathan, uh, to go out and kill David. Listen, and Jonathan could not bring himself to the understanding of why his, his dad wanted to kill David. See, but what Saul didn't understand that, God already made it possible for Jonathan and David to form a, 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 a relationship, to have a bond with one another. Amen. And here Saul wanted to kill David. He was trying to figure out how he can get David killed. So, you know, he was telling his son in so many words, I want you to go and kill your, your, your David for me. Woo! If, if you can't get your friend, try to get your family members and, and see because Jonathan was a royalty he was the next one to be king if something happened to his dad so this would be a great task this would be a big plus if he, he goes through with the plan but here Jonathan who was also a man of God who had a heart of God he, he, he began to say to himself I don't believe my dad would do something gr gruesome like this something crazy like this so immediately the the, the the Lord the Spirit of God dwell that dwelled in him he went to his father and he began to talk to his father to reconsider uh, having David taken out amen and you got to understand this is when the devil tried to come in and and, and take you out God was a God is already in position to let the devil know you have no reason to be here. You would not be messing with this man or woman of God. So what you need to do is get to stepping. Amen. So here, Jonathan convinced his father not to kill David. Woo! And then what we want to understand about this is Jonathan, like I said, was a man of God himself. Him and David had some similarities and they had some differences. But when it came down to the similarity, both of them knew who God was. They lined up with God's word. They were very humble. They respect authority. Listen, that they knew that God was dwelling in them and that God is the only God and true and living God. Amen. And if I go a little further, it said as soon as the next victory over the Philistine brought David even more praise from the people, troubling spirit resettled on Saul and he began plotting murder again. Now listen, listen. When his son Jonathan convinced his father, listen, to not take David's life, whoo, listen, it didn't last long because it says here in the Bible that war broke out again. And when David defeated the Philistine, oh, here we go again, here we go. Praises from the people 
began to go out to David. And that made my boy Saul even madder. He got angry. He could not stand it. Because listen, if you are a king of a kingdom and, and, and your people look up to you and they expect for you to protect the kingdom, amen. But here we have a, a young dude named David who came into the scene and who had the ability to take out giants to, to go and, and, and take over armies from other areas to, to have victory over in battle. Listen, my boy Saul was, whoo, he was teed off. See, that's what happened when you, when you find yourself leaving or walking away from God, and especially when God begins to reject you, and you allow the, the spirits to come in you. See, the spirit will make you say some stupid things, make some dumb decisions. Let me bring it in today's time. Can I do that? Listen, we have some people right now in our surrounding. Listen, 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 listen. God is trying to bless you. God is trying to elevate you. But because you see somebody who could do something a little better than you, you begin to get upset and mad. And what you begin to do is let those devils, I said it, let those devils, those evil spirits, begin to dwell in you and make you miss out on your blessing. But I'm here to tell you now that if you just let your enemy do what they're supposed to do, yeah, but listen, I'm gonna say it again. If you just let your enemies do what they're supposed to do, God is going to be on the front line, standing there, saying, where y'all think you're going? And God going to say, listen, dismiss yourself, because there is no place for you right here. Amen. So we got to understand that, number one, I said it once before, and I'm going to say it again. The devil was on his job. He was doing what he's supposed to do. But he didn't know or realize that God already was there. God already had showed up and he was getting ready what? To show out. Woo! Let me slow it down. Okay. Woo! And then it said, people began to praise David even more and Saul became trouble. And he began to plot murder again. Woo! He began to think, how can I get rid of this boy? He's getting on my nerve. He, he, he's messing up my program. He's making me look bad. See, the devil don't like when you make him look bad, but he don't understand. God is making him look bad. Woo! Let, let's move on. Let's move on. And they say, first, he threw uh, another javelin at David, who again dodged it. Listen. And then he uh, dispatched a mob of man to ambush David at his own house. However, however, David wife, y'all better listen. Once again, once again, my boy, who saw try to take David out. Who he tried to, he threw another spear at him. He tried to get his boys to jump David. Well, y'all don't know what I'm talking about. When when you when, when it seems like every time you 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 get ahead or you you get out of the devil's way or you advance into your next blessing, the devil gotta figure out how can I take him out. It didn't work the first time. It didn't work the second time. So why do the devil think it's going to work the third time? Woo! But here, let me tell you something. Let me show you how God is working this thing out. Do y'all remember uh, Micah when his daughter was in love with David? And Saul found out, listen, that was nothing but God working some things out. See, God be working behind the scene. Why are you worrying and complaining and trying to figure out how a situation is going to work out? God already figured it out. God already got it straightened out. God already made a way out of what? No way. Woo! Somebody needed to hear that. Woo! Listen. And, and, and then it, it, it said this. David's wife, Micah, staged one of the oldest getaway tricks in the book. She helped David escape through a window. Y'all better listen to me. Listen how God, look how God orchestrated this thing. Amen. Sometimes we, we, we go to God and we go to God in prayer, get on our knees. We, we cry out and you know, it's nothing wrong with that. And we looking for something, something miraculous to happen. Where God may send his angels from, from heaven to come down and defeat our army. But you got to understand that God can operate any way that he want to operate. Listen, God took it, this, this woman that was in love with David, his wife, his, 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 his 
his, his number one woman in his life at that time. Let me say it like that. God already let David know, listen, this woman that's in love with you, she's going to show you how much she loves you. And he said that she staged up the oldest getaway trick in the book. She made it possible for David to escape through the window. See, sometimes we think we need to go out the front door to escape. But you don't understand, sometimes that front door can be blocked. Yes, I know God can come and clear the front door, but God does things uniquely. God made it possible for my boy to slip out the window. Woo! You know, some of you were slipping out out a window back in the day, but it wasn't for a good thing. Y'all better listen to me. I just told, I just, I just plucked in somebody's life. And, and then it says, David made a run for Samuel's hometown, Ramah. Amen. The chase came to a surprising end when three sets of saws, thugs, and finally saw himself arrive at the priest's town only to be stopped in their track by the Holy Spirit. Oh my God. You know what? I think I need to walk to the water. I think I, I, think I need to walk to the water because guess what? Like I said, there is a blessing here at the water. You got to understand that God can show up anywhere to help anybody. Amen. And it said that when David, listen, got out of the window, when he slipped out of the window, when his wife helped him get out of the window, when his helpmate helped him get out the window, y'all better listen to me. And he ran to, to Samuel's hometown. Listen, he was going back to, 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 to where the, the, the priest, where the prophet, listen, Samuel dwelled at or where he came from. See, I, I'm here to tell you is when God has a prophet who's anointed, listen, that he sent to you to speak into your life, to anoint your head. Now, you got to understand, when David was being anointed, or when they were pouring oil in on his head, when he first came on the scene, see, we got to understand that that anointing, that oil, was, wasn't just for that time. It was also for the now, the present, the future. Listen, because God already knew that so David was going to be confronted with some things. Amen. So you better not take that anointing, that oil, lightly. But it said that Saul and his boys, his thugs, see, they said, okay, we got to go and get David. We got to go find David. We got to take him out because, listen, this boy is getting away. He He's dodging death too many ways. He's dodging death. Uh, I don't understand what's going on. See, when you when you don't let the spirit of God dwell in you, see, you, you, you're going to be confused all the time. You're going to try to, to figure things out. But if you're lined up in the word of God, God is going to show you some things. God is going to show you the roadmap how he's going to do things. And, and it said that Samuel, listen, Samuel, what was he? He was somewhere in the midst. See, let me tell you about a prophet. A prophet don't have to be in your presence, but he can leave his spirit within the area. Do you understand? It's just like an animal. Listen, I'm using this analysis. Listen, when you see animals out in the wild, like I said, you want to get close to God, get close to nature. You will see that they mark their territory to let other animals know that this is my area. I have been this, been here. And see, when they was going to send your hometown, the anointing was already there. The Holy Spirit was already there waiting on my boy. Who saw? And, and, and it said that he arrived at the priest town only to be stopped in their track by the who? Holy Spirit. Woo! Oh my God. God has not given us the spirit of fear. You don't have to fear when the Holy Spirit already went ahead of you and established, already letting you know that the protection, the protection plan has been established. And it said that they have been stopped in their track. Look at that Holy Spirit. That Holy Spirit is awesome. The Holy Spirit will show up and show out. See, when I say the Holy Spirit, I'm also talking about the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. I'm talking about the Trinity. I'm talking about the three superpowers. Y'all better listen to me. 
And it said the pursuer were compelled to join a band of prophets who were in the, the middle of a worship meeting and they thus they were powerless to do the evil they had originally planned. Now listen to me. Listen, 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 listen. The devil thought he had everything set up. The devil thought he would be able to go in there. I'm talking about Saul and, and, and bring David to justice or to bring him out to kill him. But he didn't know that God already had things set up. God already got things set up in your life. Amen. The Holy Spirit is right there. The devil is standing there shaking his head upset because he can't go no further. Because one thing the devil recognized the Holy Spirit. The whole the devil recognized when you got God dwelling in you. See, the devil don't like when God show up and, and take control of a situation. The devil don't like when God speaks and say, hold up, swole up. This is my child. I have great plans for them. I have a destiny for them to, to, to get to. So devil, you need to move on and, and don't dwell over here because this is my territory. Sometimes we just got to tell the devil, hey, listen, this is my territory. It was, it was established by the Holy Spirit. But it is up to you to believe and understand that the Holy Spirit dwells in your surroundings. Woo! Lord Jesus, this, 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 this is some good word. This is some good and awesome word. Amen. Now, let's go back a little. See, if Jonathan did not disobey his father, King Saul, because he disobeyed his father, things begin to flow. See, yes, I know we should um, respect authority, but in this situation, Jonathan was being guided by the Holy Spirit. There's the Holy Spirit again, telling him to go and talk to your father to reconsider. So when Jonathan became obedient or disregard what his father said, listen, we gotta understand what is the Holy Spirit was not the Holy Spirit. This was the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit is about righteousness. It is about right. So I know as I was reading that the Holy Spirit dwelled in my boy Jonathan because it was about righteousness. Amen. And, and Jonathan had no problem, listen, disobeying his father because he knew right from wrong. Woo! Praise God, praise God, praise God. This word is right. It may hurt. It's tight. But if you follow the word of God, God is going to take you out of many situations that the devil caused for you to be harmed. Amen. God is saying right now to me that there's somebody looking at me, watching me on Facebook Live. I need to tell you this. You need to listen to the voice of the prophet. God is letting you know right now that there is trouble up the way. There is an obstacle that is getting, that's being set for you right now. There is, somebody is getting ready, trying to, to stop you from getting your blessing. But God is saying, if you just remain humble, if you just do what I tell you to do, the Holy Spirit will go before you. You listen to me. I think I need to get closer. I'm going to say it again. The Holy Spirit is speaking to your prophet. Ooh, did I say prophet? Let me run with it. He is saying, listen, the devil is setting some obstacles and some hurdles up in front of you. And God is saying, if you just listen and obey me and remain humble, the Holy Spirit shall go before for you listen go before you and establish your territory so when the devil comes and, and, and think he's going to come to the gate to the front door the holy spirit going to be there and the devil will recognize listen 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 my boys listen dude we can't dwell right here because the holy spirit is here letting us know we cannot have this territory we cannot have this child of god y'all better listen to me god is saying if you just stand still if you remain humble that obstacle that hurdle that is before you i will dismiss it 
Woo! Somebody needed to hear that. Because there is a storm coming. Listen, there is a storm coming your way. Let, let me just move this out the way. Let me move this out the way. There is a storm coming your way. And this storm that is getting ready to, ready to come your way, it is getting ready to do some damage. It is getting ready to do some harm to people you never expected harm to come to. But God is saying, if you line yourself up with the Holy Spirit, that He would carry you through. There's a storm that is brewing. There's a storm that is, that is uh, um, beginning to form over the water. But God is saying, even though it's over the war water, that there is power, there is, is anointing in the water or at the water. God is saying, I'm getting ready to do some things that's going to, to make some things go completely out. I'm getting ready to bring some new life in your life God is saying now is the time for a change God is saying listen somebody's trying to take you out somebody trying to tell you right now you want amount you won't amount to nothing but they don't understand that God already equipped you as a youngster to he God already prepare you for such a time like this Woo, I know somebody need to hear that Oh, let's give God some praise. Let's give him some honor. Come on, God wanna, he just wants some praise. Come on, God wants something from you. God wanna give you something, but he wants something in return. Woo, come on. Oh, yes, Lord, we thank you. In the midst of your creation, in the midst of the water, Lord, we just wanna thank you, Lord. Lord, you spoke to us this morning. Lord, you established some things with us this morning. Lord, you already told us, Lord, what's getting ready to come our way. And Lord, that you will go before us and fight our battle. Oh, come on, people of God. Just raise your hand. Oh, people of God. Oh, at the water. At the water is where is that? At the water, God is getting ready to change some things. There's a storm out on the water. There's a storm out there. Your soul must be anchored. Listen. God is saying a storm is coming. God is saying a storm is coming. And some of you are not anchoring the word of God. God is saying, I, I want you to anchor yourself because that's the storm is getting ready to come. This storm is gonna be a storm like no other. Woo! At the water. At the water. Oh, there may be somebody right now out there. Oh, that want to anchor their life in the word of God. They want to give their life to Christ. Just lift your hands where you may be. Repeat after me father lord i thank you lord lord i come to you lord and i won't repent for my sin lord i just want to ask for forgiveness lord i want to give my life to you lord i believe your son jesus died for our sin and he rose the third day i believe and i understand that christ can get me through this life i believe that christ will forgive me. I believe the Father will forgive me. Lord, I ask you right now to come in my life and change me. Lord, change me. Lord, open my mouth so I may begin to repent for the things I did to you, for the hurt I brought to you, the pain I put upon you. Lord, forgive me now. Lord, there may be somebody right now who's laying on a bed, hospital bed, because of this COVID or any situation. Lord, all you need to do, we know you need to do, just step up and speak. Just raise your hand and just touch that body, Lord, and that body we will come under subjection. Lord, I thank you and I magnify your name. Lord, I ask you to speak to that body that is, that is out of commission, that is dying, that is going to the final level. Lord, I ask you, Lord, to speak in the ear gate and speak to the body that it may line up and come back to a resurrection form to stand up and let the person understand, for God, I will live because God has been good to me. Oh, Lord, I just want to thank you for your man servant and allow me to speak to your people this morning. Lord, thank you, Lord, for giving me such a word to give to them. Lord, I'd ask you right now, Lord, right now, Lord, to bless my family. Lord, bless my family here in Georgia and New York 
in North Carolina. Oh, Lord, thank you, Lord. Lord, I ask you to bless my children, Lord. Lord, those that don't know the word of God, that don't know Jesus, Lord, I ask you right now, Lord, to begin to speak to them. Let them know that tomorrow is not promised. Lord, I thank you and magnify your holy and magnificent name. Let the people of God say amen, amen, and amen. Woo! I just thank God for that word. How God spoke here at the water. Oh, if you guys understood what I'm when I talk about at the water. It's something about the water. God has me to come out here every week to the water to bring this word. Because there is energy. There is, there is, whew, I don't know how to explain this. There's power here at the water. Water has a capability of putting a calmness in you before the storm. Y'all, did y'all listen to me? So I just thank God for this word. And everybody here on Facebook Live listening to me. And I just want you to come back every week because God got a word for you. God going to speak into your life. And I just want to thank God for my bishop and, and his wife. That's Bishop Dantes Hunt and Pastor Tia Hunt of Faith Victory Christian Center of Rochester, New York. I want to thank you so much uh, for everything you, you have done. While we was in Rochester, I just wanted to give you that prop that we love you, we love you, and we love you. And just remember, after this live broadcast at the end, you will see our announcements, everything that's going to happen. And I want everybody to have a great and awesome holiday. And you know what? It's, it's all about Jesus. Jesus is the reason for the season. Amen. And I just want you to understand, make sure you pay your tithes and offering before you go out and spend all that money. Then you turn around and tell God, I don't have your 10%. Woo! But you got, 10, you got, you got tens of thousands of hundreds of dollars to go out there and buy all those gifts. But God just asked for a dime. I, I better leave that alone. But I just want to thank God for everybody. You have a blessed and awesome afternoon. And, and this whole week, God is going to do something great. And remember what I said. That God is going to send the Holy Spirit before you to stop the devil from taking control of your blessing. This is Pastor David of Melody Family Worship Center of Atlanta and Dallas, Jordan, saying I love you, I love you, and it's all about the kingdom. You know God loves you. Peace out.